Welcome back for another uh, pulmonary NCLEX question of the day. Our question today says, the nurse is caring for a client who has a chest tube attached to a closed chest drainage system. Which of the following actions should the nurse take? Select all that apply. So we are going to have multiple correct options here and we are looking for something that would be indicated for our clients with a chest tube. So a chest tube is inserted into the pleural cavity to help drain air, blood, fluid um, from the pleural space. So keep that in mind as we um, look at these options. Option one says avoid stripping or milking the client's chest tube. Um, this is a correct option here because we don't want to do this. So when we strip or milk the client's chest tube, it creates a change in intrathoracic pressure, right? Because we have our pleural cavity, which is a closed cavity now attached to this other closed system. So when we, you know, clamp or pull on it, we are changing that intrathoracic pressure. It's not great. We want to avoid that if possible. Um, and then option two, two says to clamp the chest tube while the client is ambulating. Uh, this is not a correct option. We don't want to clamp the chest tube. Um, when we clamp the chest tube, we are preventing drainage from anything that's in that pleural cavity that needs to come out. We have now clamped it. We've stopped it. So we are going to have an increase in that intrathoracic pressure. We can be, develop a tension pneumothorax when that happens, um, which is, is very dangerous. So we definitely want to avoid clamping um, unless we have a specific order or we are like troubleshooting. We definitely don't want to clamp though while we're ambulating. Option three says to withhold analgesics to prevent respiratory depression. Um, this is an incorrect option. Okay, so we know that opioids can cause respiratory depression, but those aren't the only analgesics available. Um, we can use NSAIDs um, and, and some other things as well. So when we experience pain, we don't want to take deep breaths. When we're not taking deep breaths, we get atelectasis, where it increased risk for pneumonia. Um, so we definitely want to encourage anything, you know, to promote deep breaths. So an incentive spirometer would be great, but also making sure pain is controlled. When our pain is controlled, we're able to take deeper breaths. Um, additionally, that chest tube, the insertion site may be kind of painful, right? We have a tube going somewhere it shouldn't go normally. Um, that may hurt a little bit. So we want to definitely manage pain appropriately there. Uh, option four says to monitor the insertion site for subcutaneous emphysema. And this is going to be a correct option. So subcutaneous emphysema happens when at that insertion site, right? We have a hole that's not normally there in a tube. Um, air can get into the tissue there and that'll feel on palpation like a crackling, um, a crackling kind of feel. And so we want to monitor the insertion site, but also we want to monitor the client's chest around their neck. Um, because anytime we have subcutaneous emphysema here, we could be talking about a compromised airway. Um, let's see, option five says to instruct the client to avoid coughing and deep breathing. Uh, this is an incorrect option. Uh, we talked about it a little bit on three, but we definitely want our clients to cough, take deep breaths, help keep those lungs open. Um, again, helps prevent atelectasis and helps promote uh, lung re-expansion as well. So we'll see you all tomorrow for another question.